Hey, for dunks that he performed in a game, 360 degree type stuff. He's got help. Whoa, wow. That's a nice opener. Nice to have an assist man out there that happened to be the three point champion. Andrew Godlock with a feed, and Justin Tubbs with some serious jumps. Jimmy, how about this? Tubbs told me that he's not completely healed from an ankle injury during the season. Well, he looked pretty good right yeah. there for a kid 6'2. A 6'7 high jumper in high school. Ooh. Gets his chin near the rim. Looked even better the second time. Here's the third look from a different angle. And that with a bad ankle, huh? Yep, that's what he said. Bad ankle, not fully healed. Ooh. Now, I hope he doesn't get penalized because he had to go first so the judges aren't sure what he's going to be up against. I tried to put the word in all their ears to not do that prior to the competition I'm because not sure that that's helped. my guy. I'm not sure that helped, though. What did you do to put it in your ear? Was there any payment? Was there any incentive? <laughs> Was there any bribery? I just said, make sure you don't penalize the guy that goes first. Carmelo looked at me like, Get out of my face. Yeah, I, I told Carmelone, you look like you can still get a lot of rebounds. He said, no, I look like I can, I can still score. <laughs> this is my guy right here. John Williams. Hey, how about I'm, 255 career blocks when you're 6'4"? How about just decided one day to jump over his point guard, then it kept going to where he ended up jumping over 7'5". Tate George, who played on his team at Asheville. Kenny George, excuse me. 7'5", he jumped dead over him. He's coming out from under the baseline. Nice reverse two-hand slam. He has a look over at us. <laughs> and some of his teammates taking a picture, capturing it forever. This young man can really explode. He's strong. 6'4", 215 pounds. One of the things I like about him the most. He loves to fish. He loves to catfish with night crawlers. He and I had about a 15 minute conversation <laughs> about that. Said he can't jump off one foot. He's a two footed jumper. That's why he goes a short distance on his in dunk contest. He doesn't go a long distance running it off of one foot. Wow. Well, he got better than Justin Tubbs on that first dunk. So they might have been first dunk sensitive. The judges. Carl Malone is one of our judges. Carl, back in his day, his signature dunk was given the name the special delivery dunk because he's the mailman. The one hand slam with the other behind his head inducted into the Hall of Fame in 2010 two time MVP he and John Stockton made life miserable for a lot of other teams in the NBA and he's with Holly well you were so famous every time you dunk you put that arm behind your head and have some flair what kind of signature moves are you looking for tonight well I'm kind of old school so I look for power like LeBron James Dwight Howard but my son KJ over there is giving me the cue and I figure if he's young and he like it, I'm going to go for it. But I like the power, but Ness is okay. But my dark horse is a kid from uh, Illinois College. I was just going to ask you, Jacob Tucker, he's 5'10". He's yes. one of, do you give him some extra points or extra consideration because he's so little? You know what? There's no doubt. You know, a lot of people say that they jumped this high. Now, I witnessed it already. So I don't want to be biased. I call it like I see it, Holly, but of course I do. And I've been watching him, so it's, it's not all hype. So, of course. All right. All right. Let's we'll see if Carl likes it, guys. Carl likes the power dunks. Any guy that would drive around 18 wheelers in the offseason <laughs> just for goofs likes power. Justin Hurt next up from Tulsa out of Raytown, Missouri. First team, Conference USA. He's 6'4". Had a terrific year. Led Conference USA in scoring, 20 points a ball game. Head coach Doug Wojcik really loves his kid. Competitor, tough, explosive. And he missed the reverse. And that is the first thing you think of that goes through the minds of the judges. We've done this enough times to know that right now they've planted a little seed of uh, how the second one's got to be perfect. It was. So it might be good enough. <laughs> Just in time. Justin Hurt. The only problem is he missed the first attempt but came back strong with his second try. Yeah, that, that miss, I think, has to affect you as a judge. But that's not an easy dunk that he just performed to take off from one side of the rim and stuff it behind his head backwards. What is there a better facility in all of college basketball to have a slam dunk competition than Hoffines Arena, the home of Phi Slamma Jamma? Exactly. Still the, the best of all time as a team dunking the basketball. Well, you saw him used to come in here and play. Sure. See that bench right over there? 
Third seat from the end. I watched I watched five slam a jammer for four years, right over there where Brady Morning Star's been set. Here's Will Coleman from Memphis. Guy that didn't even start playing basketball until he was a junior in high school in Columbus, Georgia. He said, my dad's military, and he said, quit doing video games. Get out there and start playing the sport. Well, he played it pretty well after going to Miami Dade Junior College. Spent the last two years. Brad, he's, two really years a sweet, he's really a sweet kid. He spends a lot of time on the streets of Memphis with a lot of underprivileged kids. He's a powerful built. You look at the arms on this guy. Wait till you see where his chin is when we go to a replay here. I and this Carl. was intentional. He lifted his chin up to get it on the rim here. You knew Carl was going to give him a pretty good score because he wanted power. And he cupped that ball and got all the way, as Dan said, till his chin hit the rim and then put it through. Here's another look. Let's see where his chin ends up. And watch, he's going to lift his chin. See it? Right oh, there, he nice. puts his chin on the rim. <laughs> That's the kind of talent that if you're a dad, you encourage your son to play basketball. He didn't start till he was a, a junior in high school, and he made the junior varsity his first year out. But you've got some explosiveness when you can almost kiss the rim. <laughs> he said, I said, did your dad nudge you? Did he push you? He said he started with a nudge, and then it became a full force push, two-handed, get me to play basketball, get away from the video game. Dad said, when you're six six, <laughs> as his dad was, it was a shove out the yeah. door. Yeah. Now, still coming and still to dunk the beasts of the Big East, as well as YouTube sensation Jacob Tucker. Stick around. All his teammates watching because of what they've seen, and we've already documented it, a YouTube sensation. But now you got to go out and prove it on the court with everybody watching you and a lot of expectation. Jacob Tucker is going to lob it to himself. And he missed it between the legs, and that could be a problem. That time he got that, it. That ain't no problem. Wow. Whoa, I got the crowd going. <laughs> Carl Malone has to ask his son what he thinks. What's he doing? That's a 10. You know how he thought that first miss might affect the judges? <laughs> Not in this case. He is the VCU of the dunk contest <laughs> from Illinois College. Not much expression on his <laughs> face. <laughs> they say he has a 50-inch vertical. I'm saying they are right. And he stuck the landing. We talked about takeoff. There's takeoff. There's landing. Woo. He might be 5'10", right? Well, he says he's not 5'11", as they list him, unless he's wearing shoes. <laughs> and Chris Warren at 5'10", is going, are you kidding me? You know, it was funny. All the, all the players had seen the YouTube video of him and not a they didn't all believe it. Jacob Pullen said, you know, I don't necessarily believe this. I have to see this kid, Tucker. Now we've and seen once it. he saw it, it was over. He's a believer. 50 perfect score, even though he missed his first attempt. I think that's what bothered Jacob Pullen in the shooting contest. I think it was. He got shook after watching that YouTube video. <laughs> <laughs> Darnell Wilkes of Cincinnati. 6'8", one of the taller competitors we've got. And we got him listed at 6'7". He told us yesterday, 6'7", 6'8", right in there. Nashville, Tennessee native. This kid's really a sweet kid, Brad. When he is 12 years old, he's actually given the responsibility of raising his sisters, Destiny and Desiree. They're a 6 and 8 at the time. Mick Cronin loves this guy. Oh, a nice reverse, but he missed it. Great elevation, and he got the 360 out of it. Try to throw it down one-handed. Let's see if he goes with the same dunk the second time. He did, and he got it. Oh, and he's got the gun belt thing like Aaron Rodgers or Triple H or whoever does that. Told me that Mick Cronin and his staff were bringing props here to the dunk contest, and he was going to use some props bought by the brought by the coaching he staff. He might be saving them for yeah, the semifinals. Could be. We'll see. He should just be a junior in college. He actually graduated from high school a year early, kind of like the Dawkins kid for Duke a couple of years ago because Cincinnati needed more bodies. This is a young kid as a senior. Beautiful young man, has been through a lot in his life and comes out on the other side of success. In second place right now with that 47. So we go to Justin Burrell, St. John's. 
talked with us yesterday about Steve Lavin and his energy this year that he provided St. John's in their great run to the NCAA tournament and all those wins at Madison Square Garden. Here he goes. Cups it. And he missed it. Tried to switch hands and lost it in midair. I asked Justin Burrell, one being a normal human being, 10 being crazy, where does Steve Lavin rate? And he said a 12. <laughs> and I said, where's Gene Cady rate? And he said a 13. <laughs> The second time he got it, it was a switch of hands, and he stayed with it. Let's see if it's good enough. Let St. John's in offensive rebounds this year. He's an interesting young guy with a great perspective on life. He actually wants to go to culinary school someday, open up his own restaurant. He was the cook for St. John's this year. Yeah, you're right. And he cooked up a pretty good one there after a miss. Said his favorite dish, chicken, spaghetti, deviled eggs, pasta, and potato salad. His grandmother, Natalie Gardner, taught him to, to cook. He cooked up a 43 right there in the first round. That might be enough to get him to the next round. We're going to have to wait and see. We've got one guy left. Gilbert Brown, a pit. We said to him, what's the most important thing in this thing? And he said, convert, meaning don't miss the first one because it puts some doubt in the judge's mind. Well, he was coached by Jamie Dixon, a guy that preaches convert on the offensive end at a high efficiency rating. He understands it. Gilbert Brown, 6'6", out of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. The lob and the reverse slam with both hands. Great elevation by Gilbert Brown. Jimmy, I ask Gilbert, what's the key to beating Butler? And he had an interesting comeback with that. He said, you know, he felt like his teammate, he and his teammates at Pittsburgh were more concerned with scouting report when they played Butler than just going out and beating their man. And he thought that, you know what, if you have the mindset where you just go at Butler, you have a much better chance of worrying about what Butler does. It'll be interesting to see if that holds true this weekend. You know, and, and I had a, a, a similar conversation with him when I broke away from the table yesterday and got my investigating, uh, you know, reporting numbers on, uh -huh. he told me that Butler played harder than anybody they played against this year. Yeah. That might be why Butler wins the national championship this year when it's all said and done. He's currently in fourth place with a 44. So here's how we stand right now. Jacob Tucker with a perfect score, the only one in round one. Then Wilkes, Williams, and Brown, followed by Burrell, Tubbs, Coleman, and Justin Hurts.